All right, what are you doing over there? Just a little polishing. You're polishing your chrome. You're fingering your chrome. Yeah. Your favorite thing to do now. Yeah. Your fancy new heads. Look at that. Somebody said you had a lot of a lot of shiny crap going on over there. A lot of shiny crap going on. <laughs> Smells like plexus. Okay, Mr. Shiny. You ready to put some valves in this thing? Yeah. You know what kind of liquid you got? Hydraulic? Oh, that's nice. What kind? S&S? Yeah, you can do what kind. Are limited or unlimited? They're adjustable. Ooh, that's nice. That's still tell me what the answer was. <laughs> Spark plugs got put in here. I'll take them back out now. Mm. Already got a knocking motor. <laughs> Don't tell me that. It's the alternator. <laughs> okay, we gotta figure out where you're at here. Here, banging my stuff. Okay, I need a Phillips screwdriver, small one. Small, that's a big one. Small one, that'll work. <clears throat> okay, we gotta figure out where we're at here. We want to do the. Uh, we're gonna be on a compression stroke over here, so we have to figure out which stroke we're on. Rotate. That one's going down. Stop. That means you're coming up over here quickly. Where are we at? Go until you hit something. You went too far. Okay, so the valve is now open again. Okay, go back. Keep going. Okay, that one's going down. This one's going up. When this one goes down, we'll be ready to do something. Okay, slow down. Okay, give me a top dead center. Hold that thing up in the air. Hold it straight up and down as you go and rotate. There, I touched it. Well, is it all the way up? Hold the screwdriver straight up and down. I told you straight up and down for a reason. You want to break the screwdriver off inside your motor? There, it's topped. Isn't that, it's going back down now? You went too far? It started, okay. well, just. Okay, that means you're at top dead center on the compression stroke because these two valves are closed. Now he can be on top dead center like on this one, the, the lifters are open. See how this lifter is open right now? See these two, they're both way down there. These are closed. So even though this one's on top dead center almost too, a little bit past actually. But see the valve's open. It's, it's on the overlap stroke where both valves are open together. So you want to make sure you're on a compression stroke, firing stroke, which is this one here. Okay, now we put those two valves in there. They're two push rods. Okay, we have... No seals in here yet. So here's your push rods. These are, you have uh, s, s rollers up in there? Mm-hmm. Okay. So. We can either run through the tube oiling or not through the tube oiling on the lifters. So right now we got everything's opened up because you got oil lines going up there. And I think these go all the way through too. So these are internal oiling also. Yep, they blow through. So, I don't think it matters if you got oiling from both directions. Because you're oiling from both directions. You know what that means? It's got a lot of oil flow. It means you got a lot of oil going up your top end. Yeah. That means the rock arm should have good lubrication.
So the reason we got a lot of oil, a lot of oil flow is because we have our tubes right here that go up, which we haven't put in yet, but we will. So this tube here goes up, lubricates through this stock oil line, and then these are Evo lifters here, which also lubricate through them like an Evo, and these push rods have holes in them to lubricate through the push rod. So we're lubricating through the lifter and we're lubricating through the oil line. They both go up. Now the oil, they all come out of the same gallery right here, feeding, so it shouldn't matter. Once the rocker arm's full of oil, it's full of oil, it doesn't matter which direction it comes from. At least that's the plan. Now if you got really low oil pressure, then maybe we should we might have to block off these oil lines. But for now I don't think it's gonna matter. We'll find out. So if you have low oil pressure, whose fault is it? Um, Summit, because they give us the small hoses. Well, that too. <laughs> Me, because I'm putting together lots of oil feed. Okay, here's your new push rod covers. We need some O-rings. I need some fancy O-rings. You got any of those? Fancy cork ones, or? No, fancy rubber. Mm. Rubber ones. We got oil tubes right here. Your job anyway is taking the stuff apart and putting o rings in here. Oh, I got all these loose o rings floating around in here. Any o rings in there? No, no o rings? Appears there's no o rings. You know what else it doesn't have? Oh, there's the washer. Look at, see, they put the washer way up here. That means some dumbass will put it together that way because that's how it came out of the package. Yeah, that's what you think, right? Somebody will do it that way. Now, I like how this, you know, how this stops right here? I think there's something bent or bird. Oh, yours worked. Mine works pretty smooth. Mine sucks. Let's get a burr or something in there. Somebody bent your cover already? Where'd you get these covers from? I think you ordered them. Oh, it's my fault. Jeez. Oh, There's something not. Something out of here. Yeah, some sandpaper. I don't know. Let me see yours. Try that. Nope. The other way. Better. Well, I mean, it's still too tight. Right there. I'm still in there. Oh. Off camera. So it gets tight right there. So right in here somewhere is a tight spot. It's bent in on it or something. You rotate around, you feel it. I don't feel it. You can feel it here, though. It's right there. You can feel it. Feel that flat spot right there? Yeah. That's a dent. See, that's right there. Right there. Defective merchandise. I mean, likely it doesn't really affect it any because it's right there at the bottom. But yeah, it's screwed up. You feel better now? <gasps> Not really. Oh, that didn't that didn't make you that didn't, you didn't get no fuzzy feeling? No. Oh, okay. Oh well. Too bad. Is there any O-rings in there? Oh, great. Get in line. There's another one. Oh, man. Come on. Ah. Hey, your motor just attacked me. <laughs> no O-rings. Do you look inside the package? Oh, there's O-rings there. Okay, so it appears that we have issues with your covers. They suck. 
This one's stuck on there now. Brand new ship. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's any good. You should know that. Mm -hmm. That one's even worse. Does it fit in that cover? Whoa. That one's not good. Mm-hmm. See, we know it's not, the, not that piece. So we know your covers suck. <sighs> I'll trade you if you got some new ones laying around. These are new ones. <laughs> I'll trade you for your new ones. Well, you want my new ones now. Okay, well, I have, a, I have a fix for this stuff. You know what the fix is? Your machine over there. It's called honing the damn covers out so things work. So bring me a tube. So much for uh, SNS quality control. I'm gonna do a little honing action over here now. Quality control. The quality you control sucks. Pass. This one has a burr. You feel this one? On what? Right now, I didn't feel it. Well, I'll take a file to it. A fine file right over there. That might go big enough. Ooh, that one will work. Ooh, that one barely works. We'll use this one. Okay, this one here will work. We can use this one. Find the fine file? No. We're, I'm looking for it. It's in the drawer over there. I'm not following. Uh, right there. Reach under there. Just don't grab the course one like you did. Just find one out. Use my damn machine over here. We'll take all the aluminum off, though. We need some of that. Mm-hmm. Got tight spots in there. You sure you got all of them? You got a furry piece of tube in here. Want another one? Nope. We're going to make this one work like it's supposed to. Quite fall in there like it's supposed to, but it goes in there. It's a lot better than it was. <clears throat> you think they'd make this stuff where it fits together, though? That's the go. Okay, ready to go. I'm gonna go clean this up. 
I'll we'll try it again. I'll turn the camera off. Just rotate it and turn it off. What are you feeling over there? I'm feeling lucky. Yeah. Right. On this he this thinks he likes these vacuum cap plugs to go on top of the screws over here. He can't stand these screws sticking out of his polish motor over nah. here. Now, if they were chrome plated, you wouldn't care, but. Nah, I still wouldn't care for them. They just see, cut these off right there. Much better. Fuck. Now I'll sleep. Those are the fat ones. Well, these can be shortened up a little bit, obviously. Much better. Look at these ding dongs hanging out. <laughs> Are they coming off? Are they uh, supposed to come off? <sighs> Barely. Well, you can trim these a little shorter if you want. Yeah. A little bit. You have to play with them pair of dikes on there. But they're going to pretty tight. Fuck. You probably won't hurt to put a little bit of uh, sealer on there when you shove them up. So they'll, because the rubber might settle and get loose over time. Okay. So put a little, uh, a little three bond on there, maybe a three bond to primer and do that. So, your job is to trim those to fit without making them too short because I only got one extra one if you screw them up. <laughs> you gotta write this number down, too. All right, we'll put this away later. All right, so I was working on more important stuff, it's called push rubs. He's over there screwing with his condoms, he's playing with his rubbers over there. Okay, now this here, we had to work on these a little bit. See. See, these are no longer binding up like they were, so. so they have a nice internally honed area here now. See, they can't even hone their bearings correctly, that's so honing their push rod cover is probably out of a question for them to do. So you can see how that one's uneven inside there. All right, so now your push rod covers actually fit. Are you happy now? I am, sir. Thank you. Okay, where's those fat O-rings at? Right there. Okay, these are our fat O-rings. Fat O-rings fit in the rocker box tight, and they fit around the push rod cover tight here. See, so it seals really good. Where versus running a thin ass o-ring like this that they have where it's loose in the box or loose in the cover depending on which one you use okay so these go up in here like this now you think it's possible you can put these in there without screwing them up no well, you can't do that you're working on more important stuff don't cut them too short mm -hmm. remember they're not the same length all the way inside you have to check Okay, now the way you assemble these things is you have a, a tube, a chromium cover, a springy dinghy, a washer that supports the seal, and the seal is the thin o-ring right here. Now the o-ring that fits fits on the tube tightly, see. If it fits loosely on, it's not the right one. You just shove them up a little bit like that, and then this cover here should go on there. And she will slide up like that. And she should have compression and go back and forth like that. If it doesn't spring back, it's no good. That means the cover won't have any tension on it. Okay, so that's one kit done. You done over there playing? Yeah. Oh, you cut that thing so uneven. Look no, I that. did bullshit. Look Jeez. at that. That is nice and flush. Look at that. Huh? Look at the size. Look at the difference. Rookie. Look at that. Look at that rookie. Look at that. Look at that dingleberry. That is, I'm gonna leave it a little bit. A little bit? It's way over here. You can cut that much more off. What's wrong, Scooby? There's Scooby over there. You cut that thing way it's, too short. Well, I can cut it again. Look at that. Look how much... Look at You can cut another... Huh? You, cut, you were just telling me how they're all different in the middle. Be careful. Well, you gotta be so, careful. See, now you know how much you can cut off. Not see, very see, much more. See the compression you got on that? Jeez. You know, once you get one right, you can cut them both the same. All right, Mr. Dingleberry. What's up, Scooby? Smell the pizza. Where's the pizza? 
He didn't, oh. He's not up on the bench. Where's the pizza? You smell it, don't you? He wants a piece of chicken? I'll chicken? He likes chicken. I'll give you the chicken. You can have the chicken? Gee, that oh, dog yeah. eats better than I do. Here's the chicken, buddy. There you go. Well, you took your fingers right off. Yeah. I saw that. Look at that. You only got four left. <laughs> <laughs> huh. It's Scooby Smith. He wants another one. You want another one, Scooby? Scooby wants more. What's up, Scooby? You getting a good stretch in down there? Scooby's getting a good stretch. What are you shaking? What are you shaking all about? Man, he's all shaking about something. Scooby shakes a lot. Look at him shaking. You got his tail up over there. You got your hair up on your back. Look at all that stuff. What's going on? Huh? Who's out there biting you? Huh? Who's attacking you? Is it raining again? I don't hear no rain. Do you hear any wind? Thunder? Maybe a big truck drove by? Come on, Scooby. Come on, get over here. Come on, you're making all kinds of mess. There you go. There you go. Stay right there. There you go. See, he's, he's always he's my vibrating leg. Feeling vibrating? He's vibrating. He is shaking. Oh, he's shaking like a turd right now. Look at that. What's wrong, Scooby? He is shaking. What are you shaking about? Look at that. Look at that white stuff. Look at the pulsing up in here. <laughs> What's wrong, Scooby? What? Maybe it's just cold. He ain't cold. He's afraid of something. Where's his sweater? He's so afraid of weather, it's ridiculous. With all the storms we've been having this winter, he's every truck that drives by now, he just scares him. <laughs> He used to be never gave a squat about trucks, but now he thinks it's thunder out there or something going on, I don't know. Yeah, you're all right. You'll get over it. Maybe. Okay, meantime we're putting our tubes together over here. We can we can hold dogs and work at the same time. Okay, we got four tubes, covers, and we got four push rods now all lined up. Look at that. We only got three O-rings left. What happened here? Three? Somebody wasn't doing their job over here. Remember what your job was? There was four. There's only three now. What's your job? Find a fourth one? Put them in the damn holes. Oh. Which ones are missing? Make sure you don't wad them up in there. Put them up good. Okay, push rods come in two different lengths. You have a short one and a long one. The long ones are the exhaust, the short ones are intakes. So as long as you don't mix them, it should be fine. Okay, we're going to work on the intake first. Because this is the inner one, it's easier to get to right now. Now, if we leave this off until we put the carburetor on, it's going to be really hard to get in here once all these tubes are in here. So we can even put the carburetor on here right now, which is not together, or we can put this together and worry about the carb later. Let's just do this and worry about the carb. We'll worry about the carb later? Yeah. Make, it doesn't matter if it works harder for me? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so we got the short push rod cover. Put a little bit of lubricant on the end of it here. But on this end too. Do you get the O-ring in there yet? Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's in there. It's in there correctly too. I don't believe it. Okay, see how that goes down? Got that? What's this? Clothes pin. It's a push rod retention device. Mm. Might resemble a clothespin, but it's different. But it's not, yeah. No, it's not. Today it's not. Yeah. So we're screwing down the inner adjuster here right now. <coughs> okay, we got it screwed down. You make sure it's up in the top, so you wiggle the push rod around, it's up in there. You can see how we're down here in the bottom a little bit. Here's a ball socket down there. 
So we're about one flat away. Now these are flats right here, the six flats because it's a hex. There's only four of these on the shank. So now if these are unlimited lifters, they will go down <clears throat> 18 flats or three turns. If these are limited ones, they only go down about uh, six to seven flats total, and you back off one or two, which means you should be about four down to maybe five down. Now, what lift do you think is in here? I have no idea. Well, who put the motor together? They should know. Turn the camera a little more that way. That, this way over here? No, he way. did it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. You scared, Scooby. Scooby! Why are you shaking over there? Oh, jeez. Jeez. Hey, why are you shaking? Yeah, 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 I know he made fun of you. I saw that. Okay. So we're going to have to go ahead and do this. Here, you got to hold the camera so you can see what I'm doing. You can blow it up a little bit too if you need to. Okay, so first thing I do is holding the push rod to nuts and just turn the screw. See how that works? See how it gets loose? So you got to make sure it's up in the top. And I hold it up on the top. See, now we got to go down to it, the socket down here. See, the ball socket. Mm -hmm. See, we're getting close. So you go on until you just touch it. Not collapse it, just touch it. Okay. Now, I only have, I only have about 20 thousandths of compression before it locks up. Now, do we have any more compression on this one over here? No. Okay, so I don't know which ones are in here. So what we do is we take a quarter inch wrench and we, that's not a quarter inch, that's a five six two. <laughs> so I know what size it is, I just grabbed the wrong one. Quarter inch wrench, <laughs> see it says it's a quarter. That one says right quarter. There. Yeah. It also fits. Okay, now you take this up here and we start unscrewing this. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, that's one turn, seven, you got tight already, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and one extra, because when you tighten them down, <coughs> they get tighter. Now I'm not going to tighten it right now, I'm going to let it bleed. Is it bleeding? Can't turn it yet. Okay, now I use a real heavy wrench. That's too big. Use this side. So it goes right there. And we have a regular wrench over here. Tighten these down. And you take it, you squeeze them together like this, and they get real tight. And make sure you're holding your wrenches in while you're doing that. Now these have no compression fitting on these. It's just, just just a thin, flat nut. So you have to really tighten them a lot to make them where they won't unscrew. So, you know, if this thing will start to turn at some point, we know it's good. We don't know that though. So while we're waiting for that to go down, let me go ahead and put this other one in here. Now this here is an exhaust because it's real long. See how it's longer? Mm-hmm. An exhaust. Oh well. Stick it up there in the hole. See, I moved around until I got it right where it belonged. Ooh, see how it popped in? Mm -hmm. Now, just see if you lift it up, it won't get oil on your cover. Then you go down. I'm just going to screw this a little ways. At some point we'll hit threads. There's a thread right there. Okay, so mm -hmm. I hold that one up. Now I just turn the bottom. See, I'm holding the pusher on the nut both so I don't have to redo them later. Mm -hmm. Saves time. See, are we getting close? We're zero. Where's your clipper to clip out? There's your uh, fancy push rod cover. Push rod cover. 
Push rod retention device. Push rod retention device. These are used. See how they got oil on them? <laughs> can't buy that. I already can't buy uh, uh, wood ones anymore. They're all plastic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. We just got tight. Nineteen. So these are unlimited. Cause there's no way you could have went down that deep. New way. Hmm. Now, if you look down inside here, you can see how the got hair on it. You see the clip down in there? See how the piston's way below the clip? Mm hmm. That's the piston going up and down. If you look through this viewfinder thing here. So they should be about equal distance down. Tighten this down here. Give it a quick pull. And you can't turn the motor over until he's rotating. Might have to come back next week, but whatever. <laughs> and they rotate good. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Surprised that one doesn't rotate with only one flat on it. Okay, that one's starting. Too tight though, but you can see it's starting to move. I can't move that one at all. So it's bleeding away a little bit. See how it's moving? Mm hmm. They got a lot of tension on it though, but it's bleeding. I'm surprised this one won't turn. See, I can't even turn it. It's almost like it's welded together. Oh, I can turn it. There it is. That's not quite how it should be though. I think we gotta wait for these to bleed off. Man, that's weird how that one's. You only have one or flat or so of tightness on it. It's getting there. It's fighting me. Okay, this one's already up over here. So we're waiting. I'm gonna work a little bit more in the back. And I like doing the intakes first because the exhaust isn't in the way, see? How come this looks longer than this one? It's not, it's because they're not even. One's higher, you didn't... Oh. Uh-huh, now you're seeing it. They didn't torque that one down enough. Yeah. Uh-huh. Rookie move. I was going to let it go. I was waiting for you to catch it. Okay, we're at zero right now on that one, so... <laughs> that won't stay there. Yeah, still not moving. All right, I'm back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back to these valves. They have not adjusted down yet or bled down. That one still will not move, and this one has got tension on it. So, let's find out what's going on here. Turn it's loose. They're not one turn, one flat. So that thing's completely bottomed out right there. That's weird. One, <clears throat> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Hmm. All right, let's see what we got here. Guess the piston going up and down there. So that's our zero point. Let's count this again and see where we're at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. So we're bottomed out at 20. And that's bottomed. So you got some kind of a limiter at 20. Usually you want the lifter like halfway in between. So I understand why these things are coming out weird numbers. So if we come back one full turn, we got two turns in, one turn extra, that should be kind of in the middle, we're good. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we're two turns in, 12 flats. I don't know why it's what it's taking, but that's what it's taking, so that's what we're going to give it. So I'm going to go ahead and unadjust this one. This one is basically a bottomed out. It loosened up to this point and it quit. So we need to get more. Ah. Knuckles got that. Back this one up six flats again. One, see now we're loose. Two, three, four, five, six, and a little extra seven. Because that one was bottomed out also. And tight. Okay, so we're good to go. So basically, we have. Three full turns of movement. I went in two. We got one turn extra for for hydraulic action. So normally a Harley push rod and stuff, you got four full turns of movement. You go in three, you got one extra. So this one here, we're doing it the other way. If this had a limited lifter in there, you wouldn't be able to go down this many turns. You can only go down like so it only goes down about seven flats basically, and you're done. So. I don't know why he's got weird numbers on it, because the last motor I just did, we didn't have a problem doing the 18. So I don't know what this is, but whatever. Something's different. So maybe I have to readjust the other one, who knows. Okay, so right now, we are uh, got to go to the other cylinder now. So we're going to turn the motor over. Next time around, we'll be top dead center on it. We'll be able to do it. Now this valve here is going to open up, but we already, we have a... It'll have a bunch of clearance in it. Okay, where is my other adjustment at over here? All right, so. We go back, we're gonna be a top dead center in a second. Back up a little higher, you can see it. So there's top center, but we're on the overlap stroke. The valve intake valve is open over there. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate one more down. 
See now we're working the valves now. Right there's T D. See I'm fighting valve spring temps on the hole, see. So this one over here is fighting me right now. See I'm coming back. There it's staying right there right now. Perfect. Leave it right there. I got on top of the cam lobe, so now it's staying put. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same adjustment on these. See how we're loose now? Because we're on the overlap stroke before. Okay, there's our zero point. Get over there. Okay, I'm gonna hold this one. Rotate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, one extra. Two full turns. Okay, that one should bleed down. Do our other push rod here. Zero right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve, thirteen. Tight. Okay. I'm gonna wait for these to bleed off. Still tight. These don't bleed down much. Okay. So we let those bleed. We're gonna work on something else. So we gotta put this tube in here. So a little bit off here. So you bend it a little bit to put it in there. That. Straighten it back out, and you're good. Change half inch. Bend this around a little bit to make it dead straight, at least as close as you want it to be. We're in there. Okay, it's starting to move the intake a little bit, and there's the exhaust starting to move too, but not exactly free. <clears throat> Tight. So 
to let that set up. So this one here is loose over here. So this intake is loose, the exhaust valve is open right now. Should have blood down there. These things will loosen up here in a few minutes, a couple more minutes probably. I'm working on it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to deal with ignition at some point, but not right this minute. So we'll work on a primary over there. And some other stuff too. We'll figure that out. Well, the other thing was the push rod cover clips. I have to see what he wants to do on that. So we'll get back to him on that one. I already know what we're going to do on that, but we got to see what he wants to do. Okay, these are starting to get loose now over here. A little bit better. Yeah. Not exactly free yet, but they move, starting to move pretty easy. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the motor over, make sure it turns over, no problem. Then we can put some clips on it. Turn over good. That noise is rotor over here vibrating. Okay, so I'm good with that. All right. Put the spark plugs back in the holes here so we don't get any trash in the motor. Trash in your motor is a bad thing. Okay, so now it just comes down to the push rod clips. What we're going to do for those. They take a special clips for this setup. So you've got to make them. Right, you got to buy some special ones I have. So I don't see any sitting here in the box for him. Which makes it easy. He hasn't cut down his yet. I know he's not going to want to cut down his. All right, so we pretty much need to put clips in this thing. So I could go find me some clips. I know exactly where they're at, though. Right down the cave dwellings down here. Boom, right there. I got that many left. It's good for about the rest of the year, I think, before I run out of them. Unless people find out I have them, then I'll be screwed. All right, so there's a specialty clip. So these clips are three inches long instead of being uh, 3.350, I think, of stock length. Or 3.3, .3, I forget what it is. I mean, these are three inches long. So these are what I use. These were custom made for some application. I found the source for them, so I use them. Put this in over here. Back up in here a little bit. So what you do is you gotta make sure this goes up in the O-ring. Push it up in there like that. Make sure the bottom's down the bottom. Collapse that. You take your clip, stick it up in there like that. And we have some compression on this thing, see? Boom, like that. Same on the other one. Stick it up in there, make sure it goes into the O-ring. Don't cut the O-ring off. Make sure it goes inside of it. This is our three inch clip. So you can see how much compression we get here on the intake side. We got about three eighths of an inch of compression on this clip. Goes right in there like that. Now after you're in there, you take it and rotate the top and bottom equally, and that will center the push rod up. 
the O-rings might get twisted or something in there. They might not be all the way in the hole. They might go pop, go up in, whatever. You twist them, that makes sure they're centered and everything works. Now the clip that SNS gives you is only 2.8 inches long, so it's 200 less than this, so it's way too short. I don't know why they give you that clip, but that's what they give you. SNS has a clip that they sell that does not have the pull tang on it. I like the looks of the pull tang on there because it's traditional and I like it. So that's why I use these ones. Now the medium screwdriver works the best. Thin ones are too thin, thick ones are too fat. This one works the best. It just pops right in. Just leverage it right up in there. That one caught on the fin over there. Didn't want to go in. There, see how it popped over? It's right up against the head over there tight. All right, so here's our clips all in. So the push rods are all in there now. So the valve adjustment part's done. All right, we'll be back a little bit.